Hello and welcome! We are going to add an additional domain controller to an existing domain. Today our domain is formation.local which is here in the main domain controller. I have a second server which is already named AD2 but isn't actually a domain controller. So we are going to see how I can add that domain controller to the domain. In order to do that, we are going to switch to that domain controller, which is still not a domain controller, it's just a local server, so we are going here and we see that there is no role as a domain controller. The local server, you see it here, is defined as AD2, and is already part of the domain formation.local. So it is part of the domain, but as a single server. Now we are going to add the role of a domain controller. To do that, we add role and features. We simply click next. Here we use role-based features. It's on the server AD2 in the domain formation.local. And here you see that we are going to select the role Active Directory Rows and Features. It will add some additional functionalities. It requests whether we want to include the management tools on that machine. We could say yes, we could say no. I prefer to say yes. So we add the features. No other additional features will be added on that server for the moment. Group policy management, select one or more of the features is also fine just like that. I select next. So it simply says that it requires a doma uh, domain name server. We have already one on the network. Next, we can now install and the installation is starting. So now it says that the configuration had been done, the installation succeeded on 82 formation.local. So with that we see that one step that is left here is to promote this server to a domain controller. So we'll act now. As you can see here, we could add a domain controller to an existing domain, or we could add a new domain to an existing forest or add a new forest. In our case, the domain already exists. So what we are going to do is the first selection, add a domain controller to an existing domain. Here, the domain that was found is the domain from which this server was part of, which is formation.local. So we could select another one if there were another one. And here they will say supply the credential to perform this operation. 82 administrator is the current user. So we are going to change this and we are going to say it has to be somebody from the domain formation dot local that has administrative permissions. So I have a user which is different than administrator. It's my own account which has admin rights in that domain. With that, we are going now to go on next. And here we have the domain controllers options. As you see, since we are defining an additional domain controller to an existing domain, we could select not to have the domain name system DNS server. We could select not to be global catalog but we'll leave those options as such. The only thing that we won't take is the read-only domain controller because I want to be able 
to act on that controller, add users or computers or create groups. So the password here to be able to restore that thing. So we leave it as such. At this point, we could have an installation from a media. This would be the case if you are installing a domain controller in a remote location and that you have weak lines, weak, ben weak bandwidth in between uh, that site and the other domain controller. So in that case, it's difficult to replicate and we could go through a file that you have on a USB key or, or on the DVD. So this is not my case, since I'm in a virtual environment, the two machines are really closed. Now, here, we could replicate from different domain controllers. Since in my environment, I have just one domain controller, of course, I'm going to replicate from that one. So this setting is set. I can go next. Here, we have the installation that could be performed on different partitions but uh, you must really be aware that it's always difficult to have different partitions. Whatever server I installed, I always installed on a single partition, all of those files. But I let you think about it and there are different ways to do and to proceed. So now it's the last time we can view the script we see that it's really simple how this script is defined. Hit next. It will now check whether the prerequisites for the domain controller operation are present. As we see, here is the most important. It says all prerequisite checks passed successfully. There are some warnings that you can look and consider afterwards. So we'll hit install and now the installation is starting. So it says that this server was successfully installed and it's on its way to um, Restore it. Now, as we can see, we are defined as a user on the local computer, meaning AD2 as administrator. So I really want to log in as uh, domain admin with my own account on this server. So I choose another user, which you see they are proposing me directly the domain formation. I will choose my account. So now I can see that I'm logged in into the, the computer. Now we can see that the role of a uh, domain controller has been added as well as the DNS role. And of course, it had file and storage services already on. So on the local server itself, as you see, no changes are relative here. It's still named 82 and it's part of the domain formation.local. So all the changes we see, we see them here on the rows. Now I'm going to, to see what happened at the level of the tools. And we see here that all the Active Directory tools have been added. I will go here, select the Active Directory sites. With this tool, we will see the defined sites. The default first site name, we will see it here. And you will see that we have now two defined 
domain controllers as we wanted them in our schema. Our schema is here saying that we had 81, which was the first domain controller, and now we have 82, the domain controller we just added. Before we go any further, we will first go and look what is already defined in this controller by selecting Active Directory Users and Computers. We see here at the level of the domain controllers that actually it recognizes two domain controllers. Among the users here we'll see that we have all the information that was in the first domain controller as well as in the second domain controller. And we have here our client and the server. Now to validate whether the replication mechanism are working, we are going here on the first domain controller, replicate configuration to the selected domain controllers. So I select the main controller, Active Directory Domain Submit has replicated the connection. So this works. And we can also do replicate configuration from the selected domain controller. With that, we've checked that the replication works in all directions. I would say so far so good. You are now ready to do your own installation and I wish you a good time and good luck. See you soon. Bye.